three, two, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? What is up? It is up. We got the crew cast. Uh, this is a pre-recorded one by the time you hear this, because I have with me today, if you're not watching on YouTube, to my left, I've got Zach Perna. What's going on, guys? That's the Aussie voice you hear in the room for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> and to my right, strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen, for a fourth dimensional tangent that is coming your way from the one, the only, Uzoma. What's up, my people? With one of the greatest last names on earth. Uzoma Obalor. Is, is he not a of comic course. book character? Yeah. He just. He, oh, <laughs> I could put you straight into a Sega computer. It just sounds game. like some Overlord thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like the some Overlord. evil. It sounds like some evil last name or something. I know what you mean. Dude, you could go either way. Like I the last boss in the Overlord. video game. It could be good. Yeah. If you're not watching, we're sat in a hotel room at the moment. I'm sat. sat but it's like we're having some kind of powwow. We've got like three different. Yeah. I'm not even on a chair. I'm, 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 I'm on some. Over. That thing you put your suitcase on. When you come in and open it up, it's kind of comfy though. So <laughs> maybe work on my posture throughout the whole thing. I'm just gonna slouch because I'm dead. From yeah, you're chilling. So we just finished up the final day of the Gymshark pop up store yeah. and uh, good times. Day Jesus. Two. So we're talking. If you don't know what this is, normally we go to Body Power and we represent Gymshark at a stand in Body Power, which is a whole event with other brands there. This year, Gymshark have taken it on their own to do their own event. So it was just a pure Gymshark, us representing them, mm. and. Uh, it was crazy success it's kitted out industrial looking warehouse thing yeah um, it looked amazing you'll yeah. see all the footage on YouTube um, Instagram everything like that check it out hashtag lift brum is the one to follow if you want to see what's been going on and thank you to everybody I think I should start with that thank you to everyone that came out we had some crazy stories inspiring stuff I don't think you guys realise how much you inspire us with the stuff we heard absolutely we, I mean I heard some crazy ones today a couple of a couple of guys were like 16, 17 years old, and from 12, at 12, 13 years old, they hit 20 stone. At 12 or 13 years old. I don't know, what's that in kilograms? Ah. Uh, I can't deal with pebbles. I'll tell you. So, yeah, you mean... You, so, uh, so, have no concept of stone <laughs> at all. <laughs> okay, so, we've got 12 stone times 14 pounds. No, is that right? You've got 14 pounds per stone times 12 equals that times 2.2. 2. 370 pounds. Whoa. Yeah. You said what did he do? He went from 370 uh -huh. pounds at 12 years old to not just one, wow. two two guys. The first one yesterday and the second one today. Mm -hmm. And I'm not kidding you. So this, the first one went from 18 stone down to 12. And the kid today went from 20 stone and he's down to like just under 15 now. And he's like still on his journey. Yeah. The first kid you wouldn't have even known mm. like at all. Like he was, he actually looked like like slim and lean. Mm -hmm. uh, the second kid was a big Bigger than me, like wide, just really? big barrel kid. Yeah. So he's found his lifting now. He'll he'll be a tank, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he obviously has that ability to put the weight on, but he put it on bad. Now he's putting it on good, and he's dropped five. So he's probably he said he's still got a way he wants to go. Yeah. But he, they both pretty much came from between three hundred and seventy to like three fifty, three seventy. That's ridiculous. At twelve years old, morbidly obese. So young. That's mm -hmm. how they describe themselves, both of them. Yeah. How impressive is that? Or uh, I don't know, man. I think it's soda. It's a mentality. I think like I it's, it's like a worse, nutrition though. man when you're yeah. young 100%. when you're young though, you don't know I've had this conversation before when you're young there's no real way that you can know that like I reckon it comes from the parents because if or you maybe, don't have the education on know. well yeah that yeah. too like if you don't have the knowledge on what mm -hmm. healthy foods are and a good diet you're going to eat what you want and you're going to eat what you see other kids eating junk food you're going to eat junk food yeah. so I was a chubby kid because I was the same I'd be like oh I'll eat the same as everybody oh, you else were? yeah yeah yeah, definitely. <clears throat> like I was, I was chubby until I was maybe in like eighth grade. So when I was like fourteen, and I was and pretty I, chubby I, up to sixth grade. Yeah, and I actually had to consciously learn about diet. I did cardio. I was running. I was doing all this stuff because I was really like I had self esteem issues because I was bigger. But I would eat what everybody else ate, and it was like the worst. Looking back now. It was By the worst else, you mean diet. like friends or your family? Mates, yeah, like yeah, mates, mates would be like, my family was good. They go ate pretty, get they pretty well. All the time. But yeah, like we used to like meet at the fish and chip shop and just get like yeah. takeaway chips every night. And I had no concept of calories or anything. So nah. if I think now about what I was getting in as a snack, I'd be having like thousand calorie snacks. <laughs> but at then it was like this is normal because this is what everybody's yeah. doing like toaster yeah. strudels <clears throat> pop tarts I don't know if that's popular pop like, tarts uh, yeah, that was my yeah. breakfast yeah. for school some days because I was so yeah, lazy getting out of bed it's normal yeah. like, run down in the toaster Cereal. get a change run back down grab yeah. your pop tart off sodas you go. are like the worst though even and that's something um like yeah. just from my girl for example she has no diet soda like every one of her sodas is all um, full sugar full yeah it's sugar. full sugar I'm like dang yeah, like, it you isn't know? full fat people I hate that a full fat soda. There's no fat in any yeah. soda drink you're going to drink. It's the sugar. There's yeah. no fat the in it. Gets There's up. no such thing as full yeah. fat Coke. Yeah. <laughs> full sugar or no sugar? 
Yeah, like, that's true. I think it's just the lack of. I mean, we should be teaching this shit in schools, in my opinion. Yeah, hundred percent. We don't. We don't at all. Kenny, like the what food pyramid are? is a little weird to me, honestly. Well, it's backwards. After, I think so. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but like reading the Doctor Atkins book and like hearing all the health benefits of coming from like a low carb diet, mm. in a sense, or like at least, I don't think the like on the food pyramid, the carbohydrates like the main thing you should be eating, in a sense. Is that true? They, I don't they want tell to you fact check me on they, that. Yeah, they, yeah, they tell you that you should get the majority of your foods from from carbs, like from the grains yeah. and all that. And now they're going back. Yeah, but on did that. you not hear about the fact that they paid for those studies to be done? Well, yeah, the sugar companies. Did you hear yeah. about that? I didn't know that. Okay, but so, in my head yeah. it was backwards. So, After reading the book, the sugar, yeah. the sugar companies literally that. paid mm-hmm. the researchers to give them the data they needed. So they basically paid to have them say fats are bad. Mm-hmm. Carbs are cut okay, so they yeah. everything got pushed onto fat being yeah, it bad. Fat it doesn't being make, bad. It doesn't it's actually things, been yeah, disproven. It's been whole, yeah, yeah. Carb I believe versus it. fats thing. Yeah, because yeah. you'll you'll see all the benefits that come from like a low carb diet or. Uh, well, I do it. That's exactly. Yeah. You see the benefits, the health, like mm. you know, diabetes for example, it significantly lowers like people. You know, it, yeah. it will significantly lower uh, like diabetes and you know whatever there's the case. The there's the risk, just a lot of, of like, yeah, yeah, the risk of diabetes and um, there's just a lot of health benefits from it. And I think if you're conscious as well, I think it goes two ways. Like I think. If you go onto a high fat diet because it's so abnormal, it makes you pay attention to your food because you're trying to be low carb. Mm. So all of a sudden they're paying attention yeah, to the carbs and they attack the fats. Whereas when when you just talk about carb diets, people just eat low fat stuff yeah. and they don't really register the carbs they're putting in. Yeah. And so they end up piling carbs in without knowing it because yeah. they think mm. they're on a low fat diet and everything's good. It, it works both ways too though because then there's the same with the fats because then they think like keto guys think they can eat all the fats. That is true. But it's so yeah. it's like twice the calorie density. So then. Yeah. They, they end up over consuming calories because they're thinking mm-hmm. I've got unlimited fats. Yeah. yeah. But that's why at the so, end of the day so, it's yeah. portion control. Sometimes I see the, the keto guys who are pushing keto. Yeah. They're talking about how great it is and all this mm. and that and the other. Yet they're never like lean. Yeah. They're never lean. They're never like they're still always a little bit tubby. Yeah. And you're like, well, you're doing the high fat, which is cool, like it's great, but yeah. clearly your macros are out of whack. So it's mm. like you can't just do this one thing. It's tricky because keto be has like the only thing I, I did it for like a while. I got pretty lean, but, but you always look a bit um, soft. You don't, you don't, you, you just don't have the carbs to feel like your glycogen should look hard. Yeah. So you always look soft. Even when I was lean, I was like probably eight percent body fat, mm. and I'd be like pinching my skin as if I'm watery, and yeah, I'd be like, yeah. I'm so fat now. But then but as the soon as you carb up, weren't tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as soon as you carb up, it fills out the skin, and you look heaps better. Yeah. But that's the thing is that you don't carb up on keto. So the guys that do keto that look ten percent body fat all the time. Usually they're watery and they never, they can't really carb up, so they don't do it. And their protein's yeah. moderate. They're so moderate. I think, I think there's got to be a happy about person. I reckon your best way of doing it is high fat outside of exercise times and then carbs around your exercise. 100%. Low fat yeah. and then carbs around your exercise. I reckon. And balance it that way. So the carbs you do, because the, the thing, the, mis, the misconception with keto is as well, like half of these guys aren't even in keto. They're no, just no, no. on a high fat diet. Yeah. Mm. Like keto is an actual state, a, a, a stage the body goes into, ketosis. Yeah. Mm. But these guys aren't in ketosis because. Mm. Number one, you're not supposed to sustain it for more than like, I think two weeks, is it? No, it's actually really healthy. Most, most you can pop, stay you're in supposed to pop in. You, you, go, yeah, you go in and out because, like, was, ideally, you'd be consuming proteins, and that's what's going to kick you out of ketosis, not right. carbs. So that's the thing with keto is that you need a moderate protein intake, otherwise mm. it kicks you out. So I didn't so like it because my, my protein was 100 grams. What? Yeah, because that's what the, they'll say: five percent carbs, seventy to seventy-five fats. 20 to 25 so, I mean, protein. you can't be building on that. Well, that's the thing is that they say that ketones are muscle sparing and you only need, you need little protein. So I was like, whoa, this is weird. So I, I had a hundred grams of protein for a cut, did keto, but because I, I don't think I lost muscle mass because my fats were still high. But if I was going to do it again, I would definitely get minimum protein first. Yeah, yeah. Then the rest fats, then the, yeah. then no carbs. And I think yeah. that's what people don't do is that they'll think, oh, these rules tell me to go this much protein and they under consume protein yeah. like crazy. And they're so mm-hmm. fussed about like, Getting in ketosis, don't you have to? to don't you have to test your blood every so often? Check you're still in yeah, ketosis. Yeah, you do, you but it's like kit. you know you, when you know you're I very you, you have clarity. Did you get the dog shit breath? You no. get the breath. Your you didn't get it. Can smell funny too. Yeah, I mean, well, I didn't notice. notice. There's two things people say. You get pear drop breath. You smell dressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone that's I know. Like ketones, like, anyone I know who did yeah, who did yeah, Atkins yeah. though had shit breath. Oh really? Like I'm like eight feet away breath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you'd be talking to me now, and you'd be like, "I'm leaving the room." <laughs> I kept my protein Bad. hella high when I did uh, my shred. Like I'm always eating like seven ounces of protein each meal. So like it'd be like seven. That means ounces nothing chicken, to me. That's a stone thing. thing is. I don't know what an ounce thing is. Oh damn! I think an ounce is thirty grams, isn't it? Or I, something I, like I, that. No clue. Mm. What I'm not. I don't even know. Um, so what's a normal chicken breast in ounces to you? What's a normal chicken breast weigh in ounces? 
I'm not even sure, bro. I like my coach would just send me a diet and I'll just know oh, yeah. what he says and just be like something simple like that. But the main point of this is, I think... It's high pro. It's a lot of protein. Don't worry about being in ketosis. Just keep carbs lower and focus on fats being your source of energy. Yeah. And then yeah. put carbs in around your workout to give you that pump. And make sure you have ample protein. Like I yeah. think... Set your protein first, so you like one gram per pound of you know lean body mass. If you're mass confused, day. if you hit between one fifty to one eighty as a guy, <clears throat> you're pretty gonna be okay. Mm. If you're a girl, if you hit between one to one thirty, like yeah, you're, you're good. Like you're already probably overshooting at that stage, yeah. which is probably probably why you're only on hundred on keto because essentially that's probably all we really need. Is like one, as a well, guy, one twenty. Yeah, maybe? that's the thing is that I didn't we lose always, muscle from that, but I didn't actually start with my minimum per pound i went off all right my calories are low they're like 1600 so i went off calories you know 20 percent protein that's 100 so i went up 100 i tried it out and i made sure i was in ketosis the whole time and then technically uh we did the urine ones oh okay yeah the p6 and technically because your ketones are so high you're not going to be burning through um proteins it's like their muscle that's why they're muscle sparing yeah because the ketones are the energy source then the rest was fats and my fats went they started off at high like maybe 130 and then as the calories are dropping down, dropping down, you're only taking from fats. Yeah. So then your calories come down, and then my fats went to about 80 or, or 70. Really? That's, so that's low. Like, well, it, it is, but it isn't, because people go, nah, because then your protein's higher than your fats. But ca- like calorically, your fats are still the like, predominant source of energy. Yeah, they're still higher the percentage. Yeah, they're still higher though, percentage. Cause it, cause cause that's if you don't know why that works out, guys, it's not mystery. It's because one gram of fat is nine cows, and a gram of carb or protein is only four. Mm. So hence, you can have a but little... But did you guys ever hear this about uh, the Atkins diet um, that... When you do switch from carb energy to fat energy, your body actually, uh, it's harder to break down the fat, so your body burns more calories to break down the fat. Did you guys oh, ever so hear the about actual that? Oh, I didn't hear like, I read that in the book. Oh. There's that same theory with the, the thermo, is it thermogenesis of the, the breaking down of protein? I mean, it might not be like so mm. significant. It's it might not be like a huge deal, to but digest they, chicken than it is like a, a potato. They were just trying to, um, Dr. Atkins, he was just trying to assure, like, uh, if you are hungry, like, you can eat all the protein you want. And he was like saying, yo, go eat some fat too, but obviously you can't have like a whole stick of butter or like down some peanut butter because obviously the calories will add up. But he was like, you actually can have, like let's say on a low carb diet, let's say you had like 2,200 calories Mm. and you needed that to shred. And maybe on a regular diet, you're eating 2,000. He said, even though you're having 2,200, he said, uh, if you're on that low carb one, your body can actually burn through that and... um, it might make you shred more even though that person's having 2,000. Okay. So yeah, burning, yeah, burning, yeah, burning through fat, the yeah, burning through fat is harder so it will actually, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Well, so, that's what Lex was saying. Is the thermic effect of food is higher in protein than it is, than it is in carbs. Say, or fats. Or processed, or fats. Or processed food. If you, if you eat fats, your body will yeah. uh, store them as fat very easily. Yeah, yeah. And that's just like the way it is but protein mm-hmm. has to be digested, broken down. Yeah, it's hard yeah, so to it's like, I think it's like 30% of the thermic effect is protein yeah it's something like that it's, it's yeah. something so you can lose a but i think it's five percent of fats is thermic, like that's actually calories. a little sneaky trick you can do there so that's actually yeah. why if you're coming towards the end of your diet and you're struggling to get those extra couple of pounds off switch out everything that's not whole food to mm. a whole food source to create that extra um, calorie running through digestion so take out that shake put in real food yeah make the body work a little bit hard that's those little things you can do at the end to really, yeah, exactly. to really like get through those stubborn i'm gonna spots. throw this in there too real quick because we were talking about like how long could you stay in it for in the book this is the book. The My guy book. said that you can stay. He said that it's healthy to stay in that state for six months. He said it's okay to be in yeah, that state. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be. He said six months, and then um, then that was the number he gave. Then us. it makes sense mm. that you'd have a break because it's, why would you ever be in one state the whole time? Like yeah. you need to go through yeah. because if you think about it, like ketosis is like starvation. You're never going to be in permanent starvation. Mm. So it makes sense you go through these so seasonal How I changes. understand it is it's an emergency yeah, state for the body. Bad. It's, it's, not, it's not really starvation. Because yeah. you, no, you, you can literally no. eat as much it's, protein it's as you want. It's an emergency state for the body, isn't you're it? You're mimicking starvation. Yeah, mm. um, that, okay. that's how I understand it as well. well yeah. It's like if you're if you're you're going to die, your body flips from a sugar burn to the yeah. fat yeah, burn. Yeah. Like it completely changes its, its uh, energy source. And that because obviously we store fats as a long term solution to mm-hmm. energy. That's why they're harder to break down. Okay. That's why carbs are easier. That's why protein, uh, muscles, tissue is actually easier to break down mm-hmm. than the fats. So when it switches straight to fats, okay, it's so it's the sugar, it's fat, like it's the energy because, that it's stored. In yeah, a it's sense. like it's like so that, we're, okay, certain, yeah. we're getting nothing in sustenance wise. So we'll flip to what we've got already stored mm-hmm. on the body. Okay, and I get that's, you. That's the that would be survival mode. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, yeah. it's got a pretty cool like basis when you think about it. The 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 sound the theory sound. Yeah, I just think I think the practice in the real world is too hard. 
It's it is hard. It's not you know, it's obviously food's like not accessible. Food. You go to a restaurant. What are you gonna eat? If what you about my people just complain about like oh I love rice. Oh no, they, yeah, every yeah, carbs yeah. are just yeah, so I delicious. My, it's I like, like yo car, yeah I need, I need my, my carbs. carbs. Um, that's well then don't do fucking ketones. No no absolutely. But I will say this though. Every person is like every person that I've suggested it to. It always works. Like it's worked so well for me. But even my mom, like she would struggle mm. so so much with losing weight. Like she just couldn't do it. Yeah. That's always her issue. She thinks what, about what, it every what day. You, what would you eat on it if you're a snacker? I'm a snacker. Well, real quick, she lost 45 pounds on it. As soon as I was like, yeah. mom, just eat 20 grams of carbs a day or less. And all she did was track mm. her carbs. She had as much protein as she wanted. She found like some low carb recipes. And she yeah. lost 45 pounds mm. like that. I've been saying my mom And she never same. did that before. She was very excited my about that. My mom yeah. did the same. Lost about 30. Yeah, so. I, think, I mean, if you are trying to lose fat, body fat, my try, it. Just it. try it. Just try it. Even if it's hard, just if you yeah. do it, I promise you'll shred. Anyone I know who's done it, it's always rebounded bad. Really? It is. Yeah. My mom did rebound a little bit yeah, too. See? Because see, my parents are still on it for about a year. But they're still going. Yeah. When they stop though. Like just don't. Just, but that's this, like this, you know that's life. like life stresses. So you know, it's that every weekend they probably have a, a like a carb day or weekend yeah. where they don't really track anything. Well, they don't track anything anyway. Yeah. They just eat like keto healthy every single day. The book warns that's you about it. that though. The book, if you actually do like your full research on the Atkins diet, what you're supposed to do is like you're supposed to taper back into your carb intake. Yeah, that's what I was in the Because you're supposed to taper back into eating more carbs once you get closer to your weight goal. So like let's say you want to lose forty pounds. You're going to lower your carbs. Ah, okay. Once you get like to like after you've that lost like sense. 35 pounds, you want to start adding carbs back in so you don't have that binge. That's why a lot of people do, you know, rebound and get that weight back because so, yeah. I was just under the impression get, that reintake of carbs had to happen periodically, but obviously yeah. that's, so I've misunderstood that. He tells you that to taper. Sense, he tells yeah. you to taper because back and start. There is that well, taper. Like that last again. five pounds, yeah, but that last five pounds is going to be the last, like the slowest part of the cut because that's mm. when you start adding that back. That's when you start adding it back in, but it's getting yeah. you, it's getting you to be geared toward like what's it called like satiation i don't know what it's called being satiated where you feeling full satisfied it wants to get you back to feeling just like normal in a sense like you're not you don't you're not going to feel as deprived anymore now you got a normal diet again where you have yeah. carbs you have you can eat some fruit you can have mm. some nuts and um yeah, now you're going to feel good and you, you you're at a place where you uh no, 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 can no. maintain again comfortably because if you keep doing that, it's easy to have that rebound. You know, you're gonna want to have that that pizza. You might have any. You might get emotional when you want to go out and eat, and you mess up, and you can easily keep. But that, but that won't do like anything. That. One meal won't do anything. Oh yeah, 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 no, like yeah, yeah. One rebound, meal rebound isn't from one meal. Yeah. No, it's from a complete or a day or stopping a week. and then just going it back is to from, normal. It food. is from like yeah, it's from a week yeah. or two weeks of just yeah. going ham Absolutely. on everything. And to be fair to that, so that's that's, that's any diet that anyone's exactly done right. that then stops yeah. doing. That's, that's so I mean, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the same. But don't don't let that discourage you. That shit is too effective. No, and this is the point. Like, and also don't be discouraged by the fact you think it's too complicated because you don't actually have to go into ketosis to follow a higher fat diet. The only thing you have to do is be twenty grams of carbs. You can just read or it could be twenty to forty. I think it's. Yeah, it could be 50. Yeah, the yeah. book says yeah. 20, but then it also says if you, uh, like, the more physical activity you do, there's a lot of things that can change your body to have to have you have a higher carb tolerance. So sometimes you can't have 50, 60, 70. You know, it depends. I don't know. It depends on your body and some things, but I do know that you can train your body to be able to have more and still be in ketosis. Mm, there's definitely, like, different I guess if you put there. simple carbs in around the activity times, you just yep. stay in ketosis because you're literally that's true, kicking yeah, that's that's Like, my coach, my coach would always have me have, like, a cup a half cup of oatmeal or a cup of oatmeal depending on how far Even I was going to show before, before and after my workouts and like bro I know I just burned through that shit. I know yeah, I was mm. burning through so, so. it. Well, I mean, you've got to put I in kept, fish, you know, is it 50 grams just to recuperate your liver and partially even restock glucose in the muscle? Well, and 50, it'll still convert take it over. Bit. Your body will convert it yeah. no matter what. My glycogen is still relatively full, I'd say, because it'll make, if it needs it, it makes it. Yeah, yeah. You, you never like fully carb depleted. Your liver glycogen will be full because protein will convert. Yeah, yeah, and you'll yeah, take true. it from other things. Did you get the piss smelling sweat? Um, on it? Where like you get the you get the ammonia coming through the in your sweat I from the break. I don't protein. know, but I do know they have those like yeah, your breath. I know your piss Dude. can smell funny, and yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, something yeah. you can use to confirm you're in ketosis if you don't get those papers <laughs> of things that you piss on. Man, like you said, the, o- the best way to do it I've, I found is you said to somebody, "How are you feeling? Do you have energy?" They're like, "Yes, I I like have a lot of mental clarity. That yeah. I have good energy. You're supposed to feel great. That's well, good. your blood sugar yeah, stabilizes, so you after like yeah. let's say five days, you, you're, you like the first five days you're gonna have cravings like mad, but once you your body will get used to it. After the first five days, I'd say your blood sugar stabilizes, and you know you don't have as many cravings, but you just gotta stick through it. The longer you're on it. I'm not gonna say the longer you're on it, but like just like if you're on it for five days, you you'll feel that your blood sugar stabilizes. Maybe you have a cheat meal, then it's it's a uh, it's unstable for a bit. Let it stabilize again. You go four days on keto again, and it'll because uh, mm. like the big, the big guys like, like Joe Rogan, Brendan Schwab, all those that guys. Shit works. They they all run keto. 
It and they're forever well. saying like, oh, this weekend I had a pizza. Oh, yeah. And they're like, I loved it. But then afterwards I felt like shit. Because yeah. obviously their body's not, they're not used it's to not it. It's not used to it, yeah. And they're literally living in here. Like, uh, you ever listened to them? They've always got like keto snacks, keto like um, bars, keto, mm-hmm. you know, everything. Bro, everything's so much like stuff product. you can eat. But that's too. America. Like, it's not it's as, way more it's not as, um, it's not as like, there's Atkins bars. Free. There's a lot of good stuff we got to tell them. Like fiber doesn't count as a carb. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we gotta tell else. them that. No, like, it's not a fiber, fiber doesn't. Well, fiber or, doesn't or affect fiber. your blood it's, sugar. It's net fiber that you count. Yeah, so you count net fiber. Fifty grams so, of net fiber that okay. you're worried about. So, like, let's say you had a nutrition label that said 20 grams of carbs on it, like, uh, but if it said 10 grams of fiber as well, you can like, subtract good example, 10 grams so of fiber, fiber from that. Fiber total. brown cereal. That's a good example. Yeah. So let, let's say I don't know any cereal. They're like 46 percent fiber. Uh, you know. Well, let's just say it had 20 grams of carbs in in whatever. If it said it said total carbohydrates. 20 grams yeah it'll also say let, let's say it said fiber 10 grams that means you can subtract 10 from the 20 and that meal only had 10 grams of carbs mm. total even though yeah. it said 20 you can subtract the fiber you can also subtract sugar alcohol and that's oh, where yeah. that's where it gets like you can get creative and actually make your meals taste good like for example i'll have uh, oatmeal and i'll put like some pb2 powder but then i'll put sugar-free maple syrup on it yeah and it, all that has is a uh, sugar alcohol so you can uh, subtract, you which know, is crazy because we use that shit anyway. Even when we're on a carb diet, yeah, I, mean, maybe I still exactly, use that stuff. Yeah, they, yeah. but I know you can get over, over like dependent on it. That's a problem. When I did keto, I didn't mm. snack. Nah. People are like, what are good snacks? I'm like, you shouldn't have snacks. I mean, jerky. Well, yeah, I'll I mean, yeah, but that's yeah. that's kind of like normal. No, there's, have you seen yeah. like Dr. Atkins has some bars, like Atkins bars? Have you been? Have yeah, you seen yeah, yeah, but if that's like part of your daily diet, I don't think that's good. No, I know, I know, but and it has like 200 calories in them, so you can't just be stacking up on those. But like, if you did have a craving. If yeah. you ate that, that ain't going to yeah. do nothing. Like, you're still going to do nothing. That's pretty good, like, How huh? good is, like, I don't tell anybody, make protein bars a part of your diet. Like, I don't yeah, think that's yeah, good yeah. to have that much yeah. processed food. No. It's so, just an emergency. If yeah, you need literally, that, that's, it's, it's literally like just that. an emergency. But yeah. my, my keto diet, like, meal examples would be, morning would be eggs, bacon, cheese, or, like, salmon or steak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had um, a lot of, you know, always cooked in butter and good oils and stuff like that. You, you need like snacks. MCTO? Um, I just use coconut oil. Yeah, but well, same thing, huh? Yeah, pre-workout. Mm. But otherwise, I never felt the need to have heaps of snacks. If you're really trying to hit that sweet tooth, you're not letting it do its thing. You shouldn't really crave sweet foods Ooh, when you're on keto. Really. Also, yeah. even, if you're, me this last prep, even though, if you're a sweet tooth person. Yeah. What helped me this last prep, if you do have a sweet tooth, do a freaking protein smoothie. I mean, a, a protein ice cream. Yeah. Bro, you literally just put ice... Protein and like you can put a little bit of water, or you can do like what some coconut milk, almond milk, maybe Blend that has the uh, yeah. which though, one is it? Uh, whatever, which one has low one, have what them has zero carbs? Oh, sweet. It could be almond milk or uh, I, think coconut it's a coconut milk. I forget I think which it's one coconut. it is. Yeah, you put that in, and it'll taste very good, and it'll be like a sweet that'll be a sweet meal. And once again, put some like PB2 powder on it. That's peanut butter powder, and what they do is they extract the fats from it. It's peanut butter with the fat extracted, so it's it's super into a powder, and it, it's yeah, it's you can way buy less. Uh, so without the fats in it, it's it has way less calories. So and it'll it, it makes your food taste good too. So these are just techniques that you can use to mm. make it not so like hell. You know, these are like things that you can do to make your food taste. A bit like better, you, you, know, you, you said you didn't feel like you need it anyway, huh? Well, when you have so many fats, that's like that's why I did it because my calories get so low when I diet because I'm not a big guy. My yeah. calories would get to like sixteen hundred easy. Yeah, yeah. When I'm dieting, so. Uh, and I have the biggest appetite ever. So it, I needed to stay full and like, you know, satiated. So when I had heaps of fats, I can I can like keep going for a long time. Yeah. Then you can combine it with intermittent fasting as well. And that's because your appetite's in check. You don't get these weird blood sugar crashes yeah. and, and insulin raises and stuff that's triggering your appetite. Yeah. It's pretty stable. So I could fast till like 12 easily every day, have a big protein and fats meal, have another big protein and fats meal, and then I'd have 800 calories either side. Like a per meal, yeah. and I wasn't breaking it up into six small meals, snacking, wanting sweets. Yeah, I stuff. don't like the six small meals thing. That's what I do. It's preference. You like it's that? preference. I think when you ready, I, I think when you get ready for a show, if I do that. when you get I'm, ready for a show, I, it's I, I think it's optimal to it do makes that. Makes me so hungry though. Even if your jacket full of veggies, six meals a day like it just it, keeps me hungry all the time. If I do, if you fill up on green veggies, if I do four bigger meals instead of the six smaller. I just, I don't. Four is cool. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll be I, honest I with you. How about that? I'll be that. honest with you. Uh, I would definitely be behind a lot, and I'll combine the meals. So my, my guy would say eat six, but I could see myself, like, maybe having four total, because I combine yeah. meal one and yeah, two yeah. or something. Yeah, but, but no, I just work better that slow. way. 
Yeah. You well, up? yeah. No, I'm, I just might be behind in a sense. Like, maybe I woke up late and <laughs> then I'm like going to do cardio and it's like, damn, bro, it's 12 o'clock. You haven't had your first meal yet. You I'm know, like, definitely, all the time, like, dude. I'm definitely going to be behind meal one too. Sometimes. I just have like a cup of tea in the morning and get yeah. on with work. I prefer to do that. Oof, I don't even think about food until I yeah. start moving around. Yeah. But, but I'm I mean, always thinking about it, but yeah. I'll you'll keep be, it in the back. I mean, once you do that prep, bro, and you be like, you, you are consistently, you'll, you'll get hungry as hell, bro. Yeah. You'll feel that. I remember. Even you get hungry? Yeah. Well, listen, the most I ever eat. Yeah. It's when I'm shredding like that. I think like, yeah, for example, let's say I'm bulking. I could grab like a handful of Doritos. That's a lot of calories. So technically I'm still like eating mm. in excess of calories. But when I'm shredding, bro, like seven ounces of chicken, seven ounces of steak, seven ounces, seven egg whites, seven ounces of tilapia, seven ounces Whoa. of brown turkey, another seven ounces of chicken. You know highest. what I mean? That's yeah. six meals of like seven ounces of chicken. I know you do, I know you guys might not be familiar with like the ounces, but it's like, 200 grams, damn, probably. bro. It's How much more is than 200 ounces? grams. More than 200 grams. i I think seven ounces of chicken yeah, is fifty like, grams it. of protein. Siri, how much is one ounce in grams? I bet Siri ignores me actually. She ignores it. My mom will get it. It's I a new seven, I Hey think... Siri, how many grams is seven ounces? Seven ounces is one hundred and ninety-eight point four five grams. Jesus, you're eating two hundred grams of chicken a time. Nailed it. No, I no, said no, 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 that's Fuck. not right. That's not right. No. Nah. Yeah, that is. That's thank you, right. Siri. No, nah, <laughs> I'll just. Dude, I got you. I got you. I got you, dude. I'll just go to freaking like. Is my Siri even working? Hey Siri. I got Fuck you, you Siri. You just seven you just tr- tr- okay. your Yours <laughs> started and my my phone turned off. <laughs> right, real quick, real quick. So seven ounces of chicken would be seven ounces of chicken would be sixty two grams of protein. So seven ounces of chicken, sixty two. Sixty two grams of protein. So you see what I'm saying? So seven ounces. I'd, it'd be, it could easily be two seven ounce chicken meals. Seven egg whites. What's with the number seven? Seven, yeah. That's just. Did you watch that film too many times? No, 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 no. Yeah. It really is. No, it's either a six or seven usually. Like you didn't it's, 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 it usually starts at like seven. As I get closer to show, it just drops to six, and it's usually like six ounces of each protein source for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's just vicious. That. Idea. And then when it gets to like peak week, then it gets like four point five. And that's because you, you're like just really. Do you just measure to... that, or do you measure macros, like protein, carbs, fats? Well, when I'm shredding, my coach sends me a diet, and I just follow. You just that. stick to the meal plan. Yeah, I trust. What are your thoughts on if it fits your macros versus normal? Okay, meal planning because yeah. obviously you're you just let me sit in for this one. honestly bro I don't know too much like about that dieting like he's the one that sends me the meal and I just trust him 100% like he's he's and you asked stick to it to a T you stick to your yeah, meal yeah. plan he's, he's asked me he's asked me before like bro do you want me to just send me your do you want me to send you macros and you create your own diet or do you want me to make it I'm like bro just make it for me because you just want to stick to it exactly meal yeah, by meal and I trust you know, him he, like everybody yeah. that he works with they always have like 100% success dude do you know what it is I think so guys can stick to a Groundhog Day super easy. Yeah. Like I can eat the same thing every day and same. just like get just get it on, get yeah. on with it. But I think women struggle way harder with that thing. Like especially mm. I know Lainey likes to be creative with the food. Yeah. She likes different flavors. She likes to be excited about what she's gonna eat. I'm pretty sure a guy can just kind of go, "Got to eat this, cool," and we just get on. Man, oh, no, I need a dis. Like I, I, he definitely gives me a discipline check. Like I've never hit him up to go do a show. He's always like, it was almost time to do a show. <laughs> and he seemed to die, and for some reason, it's like all this kind of pressure on me. I don't want to let people down. I'm like, okay, I see my future slipping away. If I don't follow this right now, then I get on it. When I'm bulking, I don't know. I don't really see my future slipping away. I don't have yeah. those pressures on me. I feel like it's more free and stuff. So I don't, I'm definitely less strict on my eating when I'm bulking versus dieting, which I mean, I'm cutting, which is yeah. what we're working on. Definitely not good. See, I, think, I like to eat the same thing every day, but like I make sure it tastes good. Like I make sure my, I like to have follow a meal plan for the most part, like for ninety mm. percent. If I feel the need to swap a meal out for some little bit of variety, I'll do it. But otherwise, I tend to eat the exact same thing every mm. day for consistency, like for one. Yeah. So I know that I'm getting. Plus, the you exact get good at making thing. those meals taste good too. Well, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the way that I cook my yeah, food. Yeah, I yeah. make sure that it tastes good. If it, yeah. I'm not eating food that, that sucks, if that, yeah. if that's the case, and you're thinking I want to use flexible dieting to make it taste good, but. Yeah. The way that I'm cooking my meals, like they it's taste healthy so good food. Anyway. You just you're getting better at cooking, and you make that shit taste yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Re- same with that. thing. I remember when I first started, like my chicken was mad dry, my prep was yeah. so hard. <laughs> but now I'm eating the same you food. Know, I used to cook it in a pan. Yeah, with like I always put it in a pan. Fry. Always put it in a pan. Always take those brownies, flip it over. Yeah, no, no, no. That's I still do that. I didn't mind the barbecue. I still do that. My point is, um, I still eat the same food, but I just cook it way better. I don't overcook anything anymore, so it's still always juicy. Before, if you just have it try, bro, it's gonna be a tough prep. It's gonna be a tough diet. I used to cook everything and just rely on sweet chili sauce to make it taste good. Oh yeah, just douse everything. I had only dry, only salt and pepper. Because oh. everything else was the devil. <laughs> yeah, when you were really bad. Yeah. Like, when I was young and I was like, Why how bad did you ever get to though? What was the worst you did like in terms of okay, de- okay, dedicating okay. to the worst, diet? The worst I did was I was 17. I was getting shredded. I was trying. And I did a keto diet with no fat. 
<laughs> and, and I combined that with intermittent fasting with a two hour eating window. So I was <laughs> two hour eating window. Yeah, I'd go to school, not eat anything, and then I'd come home and from like four PM till six PM I'd get all my food in. And I remember the food the meals I was cooking. I took a photo of it, I only found it the other day. A couple of tins of tuna, maybe two grilled chicken breasts, like grilled to the shit house mm. with nothing on them. <laughs> like some raw capsicum and some veggies. That was it? Yeah, because I was like, no fat. Low carbs. So it was no fat, how no did, carbs. How did, you, how did you process low fat when you were trying to be keto? I didn't know about macros. I just thought, bro food. You were so young, thought, you said, right? Yeah, I was, I was 17. I didn't, I didn't but know you, much you about thought it. Keto, you still knew 16. keto was fat. No, right? I just, no, I just you knew. You knew the word. I knew the word. I knew the word okay. meant uh, low carb. So I was doing a low carb combined uh, with fasting. You. So I didn't okay. really know what I the hell I was doing. But yeah. either way, I was literally, it was hilarious. Like I was eating no food. Yeah. And I didn't actually get leaner. I felt terrible, obviously, as you'd imagine. Because yeah. I was probably getting smaller, in mu- yeah. like muscular, losing size. As well as feeling like Oh yeah, like you hell. would have been turned into string bean. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, doing I that shit. don't hold size very well at the best of times. So, But that was like the most aggressive that I did it. And I was like, oh. all right, sweet. Okay, so mine, I stuck to... Literally every day, turkey breast because you need to get left chicken behind. <laughs> turkey, shreds, turkeys are shredded, leaner, yeah, 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 yeah. and have slightly higher protein content or whatever it is. But mm. it literally absorbs no flavor from anything. Well, it's horrific. Did you get ground turkey? No, nah. nah, so no, chicken, it? chicken breast with that, that turkey breast with that horrible sinew that runs through. Nah, it's really yeah. fucking they, you don't awful. know what he's talking about, right? man. Okay, so that nasty ass breast, yeah, but we're talking about the worst shit we did. Turkey breast, okay. So that, I'd have it with. A quarter of a tin of ratatouille, which is basically like tomato <laughs> well, you juice. you bought it in a, in a tin? Yeah, a tin, oh, ra- yeah, tin yeah, ratatouille. Yeah. So just a, a quarter of that tin with the t- two turkey breasts. Yeah. And then in between those, I would have five almonds with a, with a rice cake. And I'd do, I'd do four of the turkey meals. Fish, fish and rice four, cake. <laughs> fish and a rice cake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I did, um, I did four of the turkey and ratatouille meals and then I'd have three of the one rice cake and like five almonds and I stuck to that for like eight weeks like fucking crazy what like was the result fucking idiot. Yeah. I felt like shite to look good <laughs> well you know when you do like a dumb shit thing for the first time your body kind of holds it, true yeah it kind of works you, you do, do it again you do it again and everything falls off yeah, the yeah, first yeah. time your body kind of doesn't your body kind of rebels against it and holds size that it won't hold on if you do it again. Yeah. Which is why people do these diets once, think they work, and then do them again and wonder why they don't. Mm. Um, but the worst I got on that was, I then was still going out, like, on the nights out, because it was uni, I was at uni. Oh, yeah. So I used to get a, tur- a chicken breast or a turkey breast, wrap it in, cook it before going out, wrap it in foil, <laughs> and put it in my pocket, in my jeans. Shit, really? And at two in the morning, because I'd stayed up an extra two hours from normal, I would take that chicken breast out in the middle of the club. Yeah. Nom, 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 Were you nom. drinking? Bro, that's pretty and, savage. Like that's, Savage, yeah, not drinking. That's epic. Not drinking and eating chicken out of tinfoil. And like, well, what that's a impressive, fucking bro. loser. Well, <laughs> I think that's rather impressive. And dude, I was, I got, I got so, when you first start, you know, you're like all in, aren't you? Balls yeah, deep. Yeah. And so I used to, I, there was a guy helping me out with a diet, and I remember being on like our, one of our big uni final nights out and stuff, and I wanted to have some drinks, and I literally rang him from the bar. Mm asking him like annoying this poor fucker at 10 o'clock at night like what can I have to drink and he's like uh, get white wine spritzes really yes yeah, so that's all I drank all night white wine spritzes <laughs> you didn't just have straight that white wine spritz that's what he told me that's what I did what about now if you go out a fucking any any uh, any spirit with a diet drink yeah that's what I tell people I don't know why there's such a hard thing uh, well, a lot of people well, are mainly shocked rum and coke zero that's my thing yeah spiced rum and coke zero yes I I literally up until long. about two months ago uh, that was my drink of choice. Yeah. I went to Bali and I'm like, I found it. I'm like, I can't believe I've never had this before. Uh, in that tri- I fell in love with it. In so that good. trip. We had it with ginger coat. Co- ginger co- wait, no, coke. I have it, but it gets oh worse. Because in that trip, we, our mates were playing beer pong and they decided we had to get through this last bottle of, like, it was Kraken. Kraken rum? Yeah. Dude, that's in my house 24-7. Yeah, man, it's great, isn't it? Oh, but, shit. Have you had this? No. But dude, it's like a nice. It guess, literally uh, tastes like vanilla mate, coke. It's the best. When you, you put it with coke, you can sip this shit straight. Mm. And even if you not, you can't take stuff straight normally. You can sip this stuff. But, but. Oh, yeah. There's a caveat there. When we, <laughs> were, we were playing beer pong, so my mate was already half done. So he's filling them up like 50-50. and he's like, "Boys, we've got to get through this. It's not like okay. Well, this is just pure rum in each cup. Yeah. And then he puts the about 50-50 mix of oh, rum okay. and coke zero. Oh yeah, yeah. He uses a whole bottle between four of us. Yeah. And I was like. Okay, this is not looking good. <laughs> and so my mate was just sinking them, and I was having to neck these. Like I literally sculled. We figured it out. I sculled like three quarters of a bottle in make in this five ten minute period, and I was already feeling a bit sick from the night before. So like that one night, 
I, I threw my guts up, and that one night, like, literally put me off that my newfound no. love. Yeah, like so you still I don't can't have it to this day. I don't think so because I'm not a big drinker at all. Like, I won't drink for months and months and months. And then I like to go out and have a big night. And I, and when I found that drink, then I'm like, I, this is my thing now. Like, that sucks. I found it's got you know low okay, calories. Try having it with the um, so it's Pepsi Max Cherry or Pepsi Max Ginger. Okay, I don't think we get those in Australia. Ah, you must do. Nah, I know about it. I love Pepsi Max. What about a diet Coca-Cola cherry? Yeah, I think we might have died. But Try it with that because with then that. that'll get rid of, that'll give you a different taste for it and you mm. can kind of have it again. But um, the, the, that funny thing actually reminds me of a story of, you know, you do something it makes you sick and yep. you can't have it. When I was about like 11, I found where my mum mom kept the meringues, you know, the meringue nests. Mm. You, know what, you know what a meringue I don't, is? I don't know what a meringue is. Sure. Is that a, uh, yeah, is that a UK do. thing? Egg white with the sugar. whipped egg whites that are baked in the oven with sugar. Nope. Shut up. Nope. Delicious. Eat trolling. Meringue, no. Eat trolling, no, me. I've never heard of Pavlova. it. Pavlova. Pavlova. Sh- no. Yeah. Okay. It's like Maybe white it and it know. cracks and it's sweet and it's like a bit gooey in the middle but it's I'm hard sorry, on the outside. You've know. never had meringue? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Dude, we need to get him a meringue. When we go to food tonight, if it's on there, Pavlova, we'll go order it and try it. Yeah. So it's uh, the beautiful. Anyway, so it's basically whipped, it's beet egg whites, so it peaks. And then they, they, with sugar, they whip mm-hmm. it and then you, you either blowtorch it or bake it in the oven. And it creates like this crispy, with like a gooey, go, not gooey gooey like, but chewy soft, center, yeah. soft center. Mm. And you can buy them in England, there's nests, so it looks like a, a whip, but it's hard and you break it. And I found when my mum kept this box, I ate 12 meringue nests, sat under the sink in the kitchen, just no, 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 no. My mum comes in, I'm on this massive sugar crash, yeah. just on the floor going, Aah. And just just meringue crumbs all around <laughs> me, and since that day I cannot touch meringue like plain meringue on really? its own. At all. What about yeah, what no. about if tonight if it was there in a pavlova? I can okay. do it because there's fruit with it. But, but a straight meringue, I'm like, wait, no. See, that's kind of like me with Krispy Kremes now since they did the challenge. Oh Shit, man, yeah, my yeah. missus is on about this. You do these yeah. food challenges. Well, I did, yeah, I did. I put it out on YouTube because I do food challenges. I've done them. Mm. So I said, you guys comment the next one. The comment with the most likes. I'll do it. And I thought that's good. I'll leave it up to them because I'm sick of thinking about them. Yeah, yeah. Comment with the most likes was as many Krispy Kremes as you can do in 10 minutes. And I saw it. I'm like, yes, I love Krispy Kremes. Yeah, this is actually yeah, yeah. going to be good. They're quite easy to eat as well too. Sorry? They're quite easy to eat. Oh, they're very easy. Yeah. yeah. Like so I got, I got 30 done in 10 minutes. I bought Sounds 50. Dreadful. I bought 50 and I got 30 done in the first 10 minutes. You should see me going through the first five. I was so hungry. I fasted to like one and I warmed them up in the microwave for like three seconds each. So they were like, they were soft. And I was yeah. just going like, I tear them in half. And swallow it whole. I don't know how. I just did it. Just numb. Yeah, yeah. It was just like that was it. And I was like smashing it. You didn't want to taste the sugar, huh? Nah. And then after that, after the ten minutes went off, I'm like, you know, let's see how we go. Sat down, and I ended up just like lying on my bed. And mum came and she's like, Are "You alright?" <laughs> and my face, because I get real red, like just red when I eat, when I train, whatever. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, and yeah. my head, like my body was <laughs> red as hell, and I'm lying in my bed, going like so bloated, just sitting there, going like a little bit shaky. <laughs> And all the, like, the sugars, I don't know, I, I figured out the macros, it was over like hundreds and hundreds of grams. Vascular with a belly. Not even <laughs> vascular, like, that. it was kind of past the point of vascularity. Yeah, 30 glazed donuts. Yeah, man. That's aren't they like, aren't like nine fat that. eat or, or something I as well? No. So you're not just dealing with sugar, it's yeah, fat it's sugars and fat. So literally, my heart's yeah. gone, what's going I'm on? I'm definitely looking that up, bro. That sounds so the, scary. There's a one Krispy Kreme app. You probably like don't look at one with a hole, look at one that's like a normal one. Just look at nutrition. It's an original glazed donut. 21 okay, carbs, so 21 10 grams fat. Carbs. How much sugar though? 10 grams of sugar? Yeah, so, okay, so, so I... What? I'd probably more than that, surely. How much fat? But even still, that's 300 grams of sugar. <laughs> Think about it in teaspoons. Oh, true, yeah. Holy that's 60 shit. teaspoons. Yeah, that's 10 grams. Oh. How much fat to kick you in the ass? Listen, imagine 11. like... 11 fat per one as well. Yeah, so what's that? Oh, that's... Three, 30, so 300, 300 grams 300 of fat. fat. 300 imagine that, grams 60 of sugar. teaspoons of sugar. Just 60 teaspoons, and I'm going like yeah, in 10 minutes, just like bang, 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 bang. bang. So I literally Alongside felt 5,700 calories too. Yeah, 5,700 calories, yeah, that's Shit. it. So I was lying in my bed, feeling so, and this was the first time, everybody always goes, do you vomit after food challenges? And I go, no, because in my head, that'd be just like weird. I feel yeah. like I've got a I didn't vomit water. after a 10K challenge. Neither, no, I did no. 15, I was fine, but Ooh, I, I gotta do in. that. I'm doing trying to I mean, I spent some everyone. time but, in the toilet. Like. But I've, I've said this before, yeah. I've said this before. <laughs> In, after the donut one, I was like, literally, I was in a bad place. I'm like, I need to get this shit out. And I was like, so I'm like, this is the first time I'm going to do it. Mum was like, are you just going to throw up? I said, oh, I think I've got to. She's like, just do it. I'm like, all right. So I chugged the fingers down the throat, leaning over the toilet bowl, and I'm like, looking forward to feeling good again. And what I was, I nearly like choked on the way out because what I forgot was that 
the fact that I didn't even chew we these didn't things. Chew them. So I would have oh, to wait. Wow. I would have to wait to actually digest and take in this food and the sugars. And then what's like, well, then there's no point throwing yeah, it. Like, no you want to take them in. So then back to the bed. Like, <laughs> then I was just was dealing with this, this shit. I was like, getting like real hot and disgusting. And again, yeah, it's the I don't deal with sugar. Get, yeah. I don't deal with carbs. Mate, <laughs> well, I used to, when I was doing bro, like, you know, they're just chicken and rice all the way through the week and then yeah. you have your cheat day. Yeah. Which yeah. I now see is the worst thing in the world to it's be not doing. Good. It's like creates eating disorders. But by the by, yeah. anyway, the funny story is, like, I used to go hard on that day Same. Like pizza shops chocolate first mm. chocolate for everything breakfast. you've been craving I'd yeah. write a mental list yeah. and hit it and on the Sunday straight away as soon as you're going and I remember the final meal of the day once we went to an Indian restaurant and they ordered a naan bread for a family yes yeah. so as long as two main meals naan bread for the family so it comes on this big meat hook and they put it on your table yeah. and it's like the length of my arm this naan bread mm. and I ate this to myself with my two curries <laughs> Just like sh- using using the naan bread like mitts, yeah. you just grab it yeah. into the chicken. Oh, that's the best thing ever! And I ate so fast, like the twenty minute window. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, in yeah, that window perfect, so I'm not aware of how much I'm eating until we get to the end. And I'm wearing this leather jacket. <laughs> it's like a fitted All Saints leather jacket mm. with poppers on it. And when we get to the end, I only realize how much I've eaten when I go to do my jacket up. Yeah, and the stuff motherfucker keeps popping open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, oh, dude. I can't do my jacket up yeah. yet, and I and I, I don't even feel. I haven't feel. I haven't felt the food hit me yet. Yeah, well, you so, won't do full. I we have to walk up these stairs to get out of the restaurant. So we walk up the stairs at the restaurant. The cold air hits me. Mm. I had two choices. I could either breathe or walk. Yeah, but not both at the same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you you basically, if you followed me that night, you saw this pregnant man <laughs> walking down the street. Taking three steps, then going, yeah, <gasps> and then yeah. a couple more. Three. I was so fucking. I, I was in so much pain. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's when I got home, I lay on the bed with my my stomach was out here. Mm. But this is how bad I was on cheat days. I put <laughs> put Harry Bow and Jelly Babies no. on my belly. No, you wouldn't. And I'm sat there going. <gasps> Nom nom nom. Are you still drinking? Are you still drinking yeah. a lot though? But there's just no. When man, you just drink, I don't know. For food. some reason, when you're that full, sometimes somehow this liquid still just slides. I down, just this like, disgusting turtle-bellied idiot <laughs> eating jelly babies off his heaving belly in between trying to suck oxygen there's into a, my body. There's actually like a disconnect between your physical levels It'll, of fullness it, and your mental levels of fullness. Yeah. It's like you mentally, you'd be like. I still feel like ice cream. Yeah. I can still, f- yeah. Physically, you're you like, don't me, you? No matter how, how much in. I've eaten, if you offer me ice cream, I'm like, it'll melt around it. Yeah. It will melt, it will find well, you feel like I just it. feel like it yeah. sinks in all the cracks. I get all this food, <laughs> feel, food but there's yeah. no cracks there. There's some the ice cream in room there. in there. But I swear to God, you actually, like, you're but not was, mentally satisfied. That's the problem with, like, the It was the days. countdown. It was like, I'm going yeah. to be asleep in 30 minutes. This is my last 30 minutes to eat what I want. Tomorrow I'm getting up and I'm having egg whites. Yeah. So it was that, like, I'm glad I don't, you know. See, it's, I'm, I obviously actually, don't do that anymore, but. Oh. If it, that People say that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It, look, it works because that I was very compliant for six days of dieting. Like, I could eat the blandest foods and I'd be so compliant because I'd be like, my seventh day, mm-hmm. I get my good food. And yeah. I'd have a whole box of cereal in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'd have a full refeed cheat day. And then the six days of deficit would be enough to lose the weight that I wanted to. And I got sickeningly shredded by doing that. But it doesn't then work it's like, over long can, term. Yeah, then it's like, can then yeah. what happens when your show's done, all the photo shoots done, and then yeah. you have to get back to a normal, normal goal. And day. I just ignore that because people would tell me that shit, and I'd be like, I'll deal with it when I get there. Mm. I like my cheat day. Mm. So and, and that's what yeah. everybody's like. Yeah. So, but then when I found when I didn't have that goal, then I'd blow out. Yeah. Because and it and I'm like it. I just thought it was bad luck. And but. because you really have no knowledge of food by doing that, so you've no idea how to come out of the diet properly. So you just, well, you have no motivation. You go to. straight from sh- from cutting to bulking, like well, these yes. people, and that's why they get fat. It's yeah. a bad rebound. You can't bro. do that. I mean, yeah. if you so diet for twenty it's weeks, very easy to. If you've dieted twenty weeks, you have to reverse out for at least ten weeks. Um, like you have to come up slow through those next ten weeks to bring yourself yeah. back up to maintenance, and then then go past. So, and people don't understand that. So they go from dieting for 20 weeks and then within a week, they're eating four, 5,000 calories. Easy. For after and, eating 1,600, like and you said. You, I wonder why they fucking like, yeah. feel like shit and blow up. For me, like when I do that all, all uh, you know, when I diet for a show, the show is over. You usually want to chill. You know, you don't want to, um, you take a little break in a sense. So you're actually eating so much more food, but your physical activity goes down significantly. Oh, hell yeah. So just think about that. You're you eating way cardio, more calories. You're eating way more home. calories. Yeah, yeah. And you literally just Less. drop all yeah. your physical activity. So that equation Dude. just doesn't make sense. You know you're about to put on hella weight. What gets me and what gets heaps of people is that they cut for like, 
they organize their holidays around their cut or something. So that's yeah. what I did. So I'd go on, Stand I went to America at the end of my cut and literally I conditioned my body to eating 1600. Then I went over there and I was eating all the burgers and probably doubled my intake. So then yeah. you get real fat and then you end up going, yeah. when you get back home, you're like, all right, I'm back dieting again. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're dealing with a weekly cheat meal and back to normal diet. And it's literally like this bad Cycle. Like cycle, and what I yeah. found was I was losing muscle yep. and gaining fat over yep. a period mm-hmm. of time because it was so sporadic and everything. And was it's so like I said, like that initial period of sticking to a stringent bro diet will work for a certain amount of time because the, I mean, we got, I try and tell these people all the time: it's not zero or one hundred percent. Just like when you're in the gym, you might be doing something wrong, but mm. the fact you're working is still it's doing something. Yeah. There'll just be a point where it hits a plateau and doesn't take you any further because you're not you're not getting that full range of motion in. And it's the same with diets. There'll be a point where that cutting diet hits a plateau where the body either rebounds because you're starving yourself mm. or your um it stops working because you are the whole thing's out of balance and no longer fuels your body to lose the weight. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and that's where the knowledge and the consistency comes in. That's why you have to re-educate yourself on everything yeah. and always understand you it's never know everything. Yeah. You well, always know. Uh... Shit, we went to the gym yesterday. You taught me, I'd say, eight new things. Mm. I've been doing this shit 10 years. Yeah. And you just, and it's a simple bend in an arm from the way I've been doing it straight. Yeah. Went, and as you get here, bend the arm now. Ooh. I'm like, ooh, damn. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. You know, and there's always learning. I never ever assume somebody can't teach me something. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's always a good way to be thinking. Yeah, lifting is weird, man. There's such a gray, uh, there's such a gray area in bodybuilding, bro. Like, I don't, I don't, I really don't think it's uh, black and white mm-hmm. in the sense of like no, 100%. some things. I just don't think science. There's definitely can track, some dumb bro. shit you shouldn't be doing. Like, the... I know, but there's just some things, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't even think science could track. Like, I'll get this feeling, and I'm like, yeah, but there's like, some things like your genetic potential is completely different to my genetic potential. So some shit you do might fucking work for you awesomely mm. I try and do that shit my setup's not the same as yours so it doesn't work for me for shit so I if I go around and do the you. study on it it is it doesn't work I think it would work but, great for you I think it's literally like a universal way of nah, lifting that's what bodybuilding I think, I think we all have genetic, oh, genetic, genetic potentials for different think, things just think, like some people yeah. jump higher run faster I think genetically it's different but that's different why there is no right different. way that's why yeah there found can't it. be one single yeah I don't think there's one right yeah I mean you know what I'm saying it's so hard to explain I reckon you're right in saying that like science isn't there yet because Science can only explain what has been like theorized and what already and exists. And it can only tell you what so, we like, study for a long period if we of time. Look at, as if well. we look at Uzi and we look at his freaky genetics and how he looks like he does, there's maybe science doesn't have the reasoning yet. But but, but I'll tell you later. Okay, I'm like, sorry. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm cutting you off. Go ahead, bro. No, I mean it would have hmm. the, it would have the answer if we well, studied was, him like a well, lab that's rat. The thing, that's the thing. Is that people but no say, one's going to do People that. get very obsessed with the whole science thing. They go, "Where's the proof? Where's the proof?" But yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. is. He's like, look at like old school bodybuilders. They did bro stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. They didn't know the science behind it, but they said it works. So what science has to do is look at this and go, why is it working? Then they have yeah. to study that. And then they figure out that what they're doing is right the whole time. Yeah. But for reasons that were different to why they were doing it. And for the people who are going to jump on a whole train of going bodybuilders, steroids thing, blah, 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 blah. My argument for them would be, okay, so those guys do use steroids or whatever. And you can say that that's what works. So mm. then why is it that the era of like, Dorian Yates, Kevin Lavroni and all that, those guys looked phenomenal. And yet the guys now, mm. so with like 10 years, 15 years later, why do they look worse doing more shit? Oh, exactly. Yeah, so you, uh, sister, you can't say it's the drugs. Yeah, that's a great topic, you know bro. I mean? That's a great topic because uh, do you know who Robbie Robinson is by any chance? Huh? Do you know who Robbie Robinson is by any chance? You ever heard the Black Prince? You is show, he the guy that does him. the crazy... Um, he just has sick-ass biceps, but yeah, he's, just, he's a legendary guy anyway. But this is he the he guy that does the crazy about. posing but never wins stuff? No. No, okay, then um, I don't know who he's he is. He's an old-school guy, but he's just he's definitely legendary. But um, what I'm going to say is he was opening up about like his nutrition, his training, and he was also very open about what he took in terms of like drugs. So was and, Kevin um, Lavoni. That's mm. where people start to realize that these young kids at 19 were doing more than a dude who rocked up at the <laughs> no, Olympia, exactly, yeah. pounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what he was talking about. Getting... He was like, he was like, yeah, we're, we only took a fraction of uh, what the bodybuilders today take. So in my yeah. head, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me you took a fraction, but you literally look like fucking way more dense. Like your, your muscle just looks and so And they never quality. had bubble guts. Whatever Neither. it is, I just look no at them and, in my head. Way. In my head, like their they muscles were just look and beautiful. Mm. No, but I look at them like their yeah. muscles just like harder. It looks like more quality. Uh, when I look the, at bodybuilders today, it kind of well, looks like it just fills space. You look at in those a sense. from that era. You go, that no, that's not. It. But then listen, that's what I want to. But you got to listen like. too. You got to hear this, like you, like Tom Platts, for example. They mm. all, all these people would train at like Gold's Gym. Tom Platts moved over there from wherever he came from. Moved in California. Goes to Gold's Gym. He sees Arnold training. He sees a. Uh, Black Prince training Robbie Robinson and he's watching and he's like wow like the way that they lift 
it's like art. Like the way he's, the way when I watch Robbie doing his rows, I've never seen anything like it. It's not it's like connected. he's just, he's doing something different and it's so beautiful. And I'm okay. So, you know what I mean? And then I hear mm-hmm. Robbie talk about, you know, how he takes all this, his training serious and now he does pay attention to those little intricate things, whether it's like finding the stretch, finding the contraction, resisting the weight, whatever it is. Like, and he's really focusing on each rep. But then his nutrition's on point. But then he says, hey, we only took a fraction of uh, the drugs they take the day. So in my mm-hmm. head, it's like, this the drugs, the, yeah, it's like the drugs aren't what's doing it. It's like literally the way this yeah, motherfucker freaky. is lifting. It's the way he's lifting. And then obviously like the nutrition afterwards. But that's what I mean. Like, and I don't think, wait, wait, wait. wait. I don't think science can track like the type of shit he's doing. Like, he does look Do amazing. you know what I mean? Like, you don't just land. I can't even explain it. I have like, but it's, 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 it's hard very, to explain, there's a lot bro. of genetic difference though. Like, I, I thought I, I mean, you, that, mean yeah. you're doing the exact same thing. Yeah, and I guarantee we can never find out. We can full. never find. But listen, we can never find out if we were doing the exact same thing. Like the neural connections and stuff, you can't track that shit. Like, how are you gonna? But just, within a certain degree, like no, you just can't. Yeah, I mean, it's look, literally, I mean, like if you understand, like okay, yeah. you just like you just don't know. Mm. Even even like this, like I can't even divide the jet je- the chest into three parts. I can't even say it's upper chest, middle chest, and deep like fucking bottom chest. I'm like, bro, I can divide this shit in like sixteen almost, and it's like. Each fucking line, you don't know like if you mm. really engage. Like quads, for example, when I do quads and I'm fucking doing like um, squats, I can feel like the tension all right here. I can like sometimes feel it on the outside. I can feel... So how do you know? So what if somebody was literally maxing out each area of their body? Like each time they did squats, they fucking targeted right here. They maxed out that part of your quad. Then you got to be yeah. like, okay, I got that to one hundred percent. Now you got to get this one to one hundred percent. This one hundred percent. You got this straight to one hundred percent. You not. You're never gonna yeah. do that. No. And science can never track your mind. Like for you to be, you know what I mean? Like but I would like argue one hundred percent that the biggest factor is genetics over mind. Well, I'm sh- oh no, I'm, oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah, yeah. gonna argue that. I, I know you see those guys. You remember you're in school and there's the kid who you're all doing the same sport, you're all doing the same mm. shit, and there's that one kid with quads and biceps. Yeah, and yeah. Abs. yeah. Just from doing the but same fuck, shit. But fuck, man, I look at people like Julian Smith, and I'm like, I look at him, and he had a scrawny ass tricep when he's young, and you look at his fucking tricep now, he's got a big ass tricep, and I mean like a godlike tricep. Mm. But then when he's 14, 15, he's he's running track, and his shit is literally like yeah. A but why would they have any reason to grow? Running track, like no, I know. That's the thing is that like but, they might not have had any stimulus to grow if he didn't play any anything that utilized them, but they still had amazing. There was still that potential growth. always. If he had done yeah. tricep kickbacks when he was young, he probably would have had huge tries. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but then he'll say something like this. This is his philosophy. He's like, the place that you have the best mind muscle connection are the places that grow the most. He's like, the place that I have the best mind muscle connection is my triceps and my quads. That's why yeah. he's like, that's why they're growing so much. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, they, you hear you hear genetics, but then I hear these things when I, I hear it come out of his mouth, and that's like, I'm true, man. I, you know, I it's something it you have hard. to consider. It's like, maybe that actually is. So maybe if you like, you, you know how you were lifting before? Like, for example, I have terrible mind muscle connection to my hamstrings. Mm. So my hamstrings don't show. I'm sure I have great fucking genetics. My legs are big. Yeah. I'm sure so that my hamstrings can be beastly. But every time I do squats, every time I even do hamstring curls, I'm not connecting in such a way. But if I was connecting in a better way, my hamstrings would be so much more beasty. I mean, no so doubt. That's, just a, that's true. But I know. But so, so, you, so, so think about that. Well, so how does that I'm relate big, to somebody? Big, so how, what if somebody does have shitty genetics? But they just had excellent, excellent, excellent mind muscle connection everywhere. So let's say somebody just had terrible genetics, but excellent mind muscle connection. No muscle. I don't know. You don't think that they would get uh, anything uh, from that? Nah. You don't they think they would get far? No, I think they would get far. No, I think they would get far. No, no, no. I'm, out, I'm with the, uh, Nature's not that kind. Exactly right. Yeah. Just not you can have, you can have all the right idea. About I know I'm biased because I can only use myself in no, an example. Think, think about those guys. He's got both. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Think about those guys. I understand that. I'm using myself in an example. I'm like, I know how far I've made it, I know what I've done. Um, I so to, I can't like look at somebody else and say if they, you know, I can't be biased and be, I know my genetics are dope. <laughs> Fuck man, you're confused. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like losing my, my, my no, mind. No, I think, you, I think thought, your, your mind to muscle connection argument is, is definitely yeah, valid. Yeah, I agree. 100% I agree. valid. But there are just some unfortunate people I, 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 that I agree. will just never have a like, six pack. I mean, like, oh, here's a, here's a good example. Look at The Rock. Okay. The Rock has a, no, no visible six pack. When you look at him. He used to, did But he? that must be because of fat. No, no, no. So he gets as lean off. as he wants, but nah. he at one yeah when he tore his abdominal wall years ago and then mm. stitch him back up. And ever since he did that, he's never been able to get shredded. Up. A wait six, a minute. Wait a, a minute. Six pack. Wait a minute. Let me go. So back. you go check at any rock picture. He hasn't. He never has abs. It's just a Bro, flat midsection. I I'm check sorry. it out I now. I hear these guys and talking. That, that's he. I and mean, that is one of the most dedicated human beings you'll find on the planet. But wait a minute, Kai you Green. I mean? Like I listen. Like Kai Green. Kai is like, Green. But wait, listen. Just listen. Kai go, Green's go, another go. guy. That literally talks about those small 
intricacies, those subtle things that he's feeling for. And he he laughs at somebody when he says, "Oh, so you think my back is just genetics?" And I know he must. He probably oh. has some great genetics. He That's not my amazing. point. Yes, yeah, but yeah. when somebody, when I keep hearing like super successful, super super knowledgeable guys keep preaching how beneficial it is to have this mind most connection, how it's such a was such a great contribution to how they built their physique. It's like you got to take a step back and think maybe there is something that I'm missing and it it is outside of the pool of genetics. Especially when I'm like lifting a certain way that I mm. know and I can watch 98% of people in the gym and I'm like you guys aren't catching on to this. And even even if somebody has like good form and I'm seeing like them lifting like like they could be lifting with their elbows still with their biceps. I can just look at them still and be like I can tell that they're just still not hitting it yeah, as yeah, effective yeah, yeah. as yeah. I would. Even yeah. though you're going slow, even though you're doing, I can like still look at yeah. you and I can tell that there's something that you're doing different for me. Yeah, that's not you as you still have to have the control to place the load. And a lot of people, I don't don't think they even understand what that place in the load feels like. Also, mm. though, bro, we don't even know what our minds are. We don't know what we are like as human beings. We don't know what our this we don't true. know anything about our brain. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? There's things that can somebody can tap dimension. into. Here comes yeah. the fourth no, dimensional no, no, conversation. No, 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 yeah. no, no, I like this. Don't even yeah. think outside yeah. of that. Don't even think no. I was like, oh, fifth dimension. Gonna, it's I'm like no, restart. you literally don't know as a human being like what you are. So you don't know what your brain's capable of. True. So there's just some things that you don't know what you could possibly tap into and the benefits that come from that. I know, that's what I mean. When I say there's a gray area, that's, that's all I'm saying. No, I'm, I'm that's with true. you on the, uh, the But mind. I know genes, I know potential genes play mind. a big, a huge role. You know, a lot of things play a huge role. I think the potential of the mind is a huge thing. I mean, there's, uh, there is a baseline of genetics and I do, I, I agree with you. You can overcome many, many, many things with the strength mm. of the mind. And I think you need to train your mind as much as you need to train your body. Like, we work for ourselves, essentially. I mean, really, we're mm. our own bosses. Nobody's kicking our ass out of bed in the morning. Nobody's mm. making us get up and do I anything. One more thing about yeah, that coffee too. Sometimes, bro, I can literally feel like such a small part of my back being worked. Like I can feel like, like sometimes you'll 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 do back, and you get like pretty much a broad range of what you're hitting. But yeah. sometimes, bro, I can fucking feel like this small muscle literally right here in the top right corner of my back being hit. Like you know what I'm saying? I can literally mm. like isolate that, and it's like, bro, like. Do that's think, me. That's like me specifically think, targeting. But wait, 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 that's like me specifically yeah. targeting that area and growing it. Somebody else that literally had no like no awareness of them hitting that, they can't maximize that muscle being grown. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. there's like certain things that yeah. you wouldn't even, me, you might me, you might not even be aware of that you're hitting. Let me you put this out there. If you, you haven't if you haven't seen Ozoma's, um online persona or whatever it is, he has this freaky ability to make his muscles appear like they're rippling, and it's like. So you cross your arms in front of you, like, like yeah, imagine a guy doing like a cable crossover. So he does a cable crossover and then he's just swings his arms out to the side, like almost a crucifix position. And as he does that, his whole chest with the fibers will ripple like uncontrollably across as if they're like vibrating through his chest. So they work so independently just on a stretch, your muscles fire off mm. just on that signal mm-hmm. alone. Which makes me think that you, maybe you have a higher connection to your body than we do, which is why you can then you're saying you can feel these small minor areas. I know. Look at all how di- how just every no, I know, area and of I your muscle that too. I think even just that moves too. off a stretch. Like we will never know what too. that feels like. Isn't it? Because we can't even do that. Genetic abnormality. Like a, that's a genetic, uh, that's a genetic yeah, thing. Yeah, so yeah. maybe that you have a genetic but potential of both. I wouldn't. But then I hear Kai Green talk about how he's aware of that. Listen, I would. I hear Smith Julian talk about how he's aware of it too. You know what I'm like? And these people like literally have developed body parts that are fucking insane. You know, and at the top of their shit. So I'm like, there's something you should just take from it. Just at least experiment with what they're talking about. Figure out. I let love, your brain try to like feel I'm, what I'm they're gonna throw about. this out. I love Kai. I love him. Um, I love what he's done for the sport. But he is a walking bubble gut. Like, yeah. He is a. He's dismantled his physique, in my opinion. Not these days. Really? Really? Not I saw him days. in a video like uh, last really, month, he and he had this waist, big gut. Nah, let me show you. Let me show you a picture. I of that hope boy you're. These I days. hope you're right because I. But even if he was, I you know sat, what he tried to I get know. too big, and it's just huge. He was you, so round. I'll tell you something too. When he won the Arnold that year. Um, how long ago is that now? Six years ago? Seven years ago? Really he looked phenomenal. Mm. This tight waist, you, beautiful, everything. And then this, mm. just this bubble gut. And I'm like, with I a guy that's mean, so in tune with his body, how is he allowing this thing mm. to happen? Well, no, no, no. no. That, that comes from like those drugs, though. And that, Does like, it, though? Absolutely. I don't know if it just comes well, to a point where I people don't... overload the mass of the body and it can't take no, it anymore. No, 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 so no, the whole no, midsection no. gives. Mm. Nah, bro. There's literally a big-ass talk about it. Even Arnold is like... We need to fix the bubble gut situation. Oh yeah. So people, but, but listen, then people come back next year without the bubble gut because they well, must take less of what they did or something. Phil came back with it. 
You, you, if you do some yeah. research on it, you'll find out. Well, like, somebody, if I you thought, Googled I thought it right now, really was. I thought the theory was it was insulin. That's correct. I forget what it is, yeah, but if you Googled it, they'll tell you exactly what it is. They think it's insulin, but still, there's no there's no There's no confirmation. Some of them say it's more food in their gut. Some of them say it's insulin. definitely not the food. Some of them say it's organs growing from, like, other growth factors. Like, if you look at Raleigh Winkler, he just won on the Arnold's. Finally. But, bro, but, bro, his shit, he looks, his shit completely fucking flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, like, abs now, straight, legit abs. Yeah, but he always had a great midsection. Section. Nah, his shit. Have you ever seen him fucking control. rest? Have you ever seen him just chill with his belly out, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying yeah. is he yeah, always had the potential for that beautiful yeah. shaped okay. midsection, but then he had the blowout on top yeah. underneath. Because okay. what people don't realize is if you're listening, your abs, these ones that you see visibly on the top, are like what maybe thirty percent of your abdominal core. Mm. There are so many sheets of muscle underneath those six to eight abs that you see on top that everyone's obsessed with mm. that people forget to work. And I honestly believe bodybuilders do not work their internal core muscles unless because they're, vacuum. they're because they unless they're vacuumed. Yeah. yeah, and the guys who mm. vacuum never have bubble guts, and yep. it's because they're just constantly lifting these select movements. Mm. They're not doing any of the sport. Mm. And so I think they become lazy. It's great. Yeah, they don't have the inter- I've seen some control. videos on it, bro. Everybody, I think everybody it's a big part of it. to drugs, though. It's no, yeah, but it's still not proven. I just think it's a lazy theory. It's, it's a theory. It's, okay. I think I'm pretty sure that's where they're at. Because if that's the truth, like, why, why have some of these guys been able to reverse it? Well, I think it's definitely I not think, the growth thing because you won't be able to reverse it. I think that. it's it's the greater control of the TVA, the muscle that lines underneath the abs. Yep. By vacuuming, yep. so that'll draw it in. And then, and they're also being more conscious. I mean, if you're not if you're not knowing, and it's your show, and they're out there, right, and you're yeah. relaxing, okay, me... then the photos surface when yeah. they once they're relaxing, people go, "What's happened to his gut?" When yeah, the photos yeah. are already out, the next time it's going to be your number one in the back of your mind, going, "Keep it in, keep tight, it in. tight, 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 tight." Yeah. Even when you're breathing, tight, tight. So I you believe that though. Like, I maybe, hate the maybe people that say that only. Ma- I hate. Yes, he do. I was looking at this one. Yeah, this one. I say, look at his look at his midsection. There's nothing like when he won that Arnold five years, six years ago. That's permanently widened. But if I'm thicker now, but I will say this though. I will say this though aside from that i mean I, can, I in my head i think it would be the drugs but i guess it's a theory but i'm just gonna say that about it it must be the drugs but don't let that take I mean, away from who he is like in his it's mind more, it's not at all, not but, uh, well, if you look at none of us, none quick, of us um, ever have even a hint of a bubble no he i used to watch yeah, two people bro so maybe it is the drugs but no i used to watch yeah. two people on youtube like to learn when i was 17 that's when i started watching youtube i would watch kai green and he taught, always say he taught me how to lift, like what to feel for. It Drama. opened my mind to yeah. like feeling, uh, you know, what bodybuilding really is. Like what, what is mm. so special about lifting the weight? What's your muscle doing when it does that? I just like the way Kai would link it to like a lifestyle way of thinking. How you, how you perception of yourself in the gym and how you lift travels out into the outside world. Your perception of yourself, mm. how you react, how you interact. That I like that theory with him. I just think sometimes he uh, takes too long to answer a simple question though. And you can kind of yeah. get, but you gotta sometimes you, you give know, up you on him because you're just, for that. You, nah, you never get mad, even, but sometimes you start. The time to, no, no, no. To like but listen, explain you know what it is, why a banana is his favorite food for 20 minutes. Like. I mean, okay, <laughs> I don't know, but I know sometimes, even for me, it's very hard to art- like. It's very hard to articulate certain things. I love when you start when... speaking about something, and your own brain loses you. <laughs> it's amazing to watch. No, you no, no, it's not that. Say, but... I'll tell you what it is, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. It's like it's like a language barrier. I have like literally a fucking Bible, like a whole fucking like encyclopedia of information that makes sense to me right away in my mind and it's just easy so your mind process when it, I, to verbalize it but to verb it yeah. to tell you what i already know like or what, what that is is very hard for me to say but i get it immediately like yeah, i can yeah, get yeah. like a whole encyclopedia of this information automatically in my mind and then to express it is very difficult so i'm sure i could understand to some spectrum you might fall somewhere in there yeah from i'm sure there's many people especially like that. when it's a feeling bro there's not a word for these feelings and i'm like yo feel for this stretch feel for this contract it's like ooh, i don't know if that's the word for it it's like yeah. i don't know if, you know that sounds like <laughs> you know it's very hard to articulate a feeling you know what it is in your head you've that's already made true. so when you know that's very true very simple explanation for that is i once tried to teach my cousin to shoot a basketball i showed him how to do it i showed the arm position i showed the flick i showed the momentum everything mm. they should have done to shoot that ball it just would not leave his fucking hand the right way it's very internal, yeah. and i was like there so is internal. nothing else I can tell you. I've yeah. told you everything you need to know. I just don't know why it's not working. It's internal, <laughs> See you bro. later. And he's never been able to shoot basketball. It's a lot of things, man. It's a <laughs> way of thinking. There's a lot yeah. of, you know, you can't tell somebody. You can't, even like philosophers in a sense, they'll be like, yo, I can't fucking teach you. I can only make you think. Like, yeah. I can't teach you this. I can only make you think about it and let you know that it exists and you got to find your way to get mm, there. You true. know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, yeah. you can't that really... Is, that is true. There is a there's certain a like commitment that. to you educating yourself on anything. Really being Don't, aware. And a lot of our problem is at the moment, people want to be spoon-fed every single answer immediately. So like, I, mm. they want a single sentence answer to a huge question. You're never gonna we get read. it all the time. How do I get shredded? Like, they ask you that like, it's, like you're going to have a... a, a, a 
30 so, second yeah. I got a 30 second one I'll tell you where you want to get shredded mm-hmm. Atkins diet do a fasted cardio session go work out and have a post workout cardio I guarantee you'll shred but um, I was about to say <laughs> something else I mean it's pretty answer. good yeah. Yeah. no no guarantee I'll back you man yeah. no guaranteed pretty good. guaranteed guaranteed um, but many things we lost was like basically how long is a piece of string no, it's you know? like how do I build muscle like how many grams yeah. of protein what, what's the best this and that yeah for bodybuilding type shit like you're never really gonna a lot of the time, I don't think you're really going to find the knowledge online because it's such experimental knowledge. Like, you have to get the fuck in the gym and feel Fuck-ing, that feeling yeah. that nobody can express into a word. Agreed. There's literally no word for these things, so I try my best to explain, but like, you really just have to go and train, and uh, it's that type yeah, of Yeah, stop knowledge. being held it's back knowledge. by thinking you need to be told how to start. Just get in and start mm. something and learn as you go, and then... Do your research, yeah, by all means. Research along the yeah, way. Do, you, do your research. That'll, that'll, That's going to trigger your mind, absolutely, yeah. but uh, like... Don't just hoard knowledge. Like you're gonna have to get in the game and fucking yeah. feel it. Yeah. You know, you like. I'd rather like. I would rather. Like I don't even care about the science. Sometimes I know. I want to know what the science feels like. Like what does it feel like to? Uh, science says, oh, you need to. You get what I'm saying? Like what does it? Science gives you like a strict, a strict. Uh, path what does that feel like though? Some do. personal trainer can say, hey, you got it. This is what happens when you do this. Or what? This is what happens when you do this. Like for. Let me give you one real quick. Even low <laughs> blood sugar, bro. Low blood sugar. Like, when I'm low-carb dieting, I know what low blood sugar feels like now. Even though I don't uh-huh. have, like, diabetes, I know what that feels like. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, I'm feeling some type, oh, wow, that's what that feels like. I know what it is now. Um, that's an example, like, in dieting. But in terms of, like, bodybuilding, like, a personal trainer can be like, yo, you need to, let's say, go till failure or something. Or, like, me, I'll tell people, you know, hit some heavy weight. And then after you're done burning out with the heavy weight, then you pick the light weight up. And then it'll feel so much different than if you just started with light weight. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. You. Like if I, I picked up you. a 50 yeah, pound yeah, dumbbell yeah. and burned out, and then yeah. I picked up a fucking 25 and burned out, it feels so much different yeah. than if I just picked up 25 and burned mm, out. Yeah. There's literally just something different that yeah. happens. And you know, let's say somebody put that into words, you got to go be the one to feel for that. Like you got to feel what that means. Like you know what I'm saying? I can't explain. That's, it. that's, that's as long as the same lines of knowledge as when you walk into the gym, you know how you feel. You you can almost tell how much your potential is going to be that day in terms of weight you can lift, mm. just because of your previous knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I you, you've about, had a lot of different experiences. Doing let's finish podcast on this one actually, because somebody asked me today. Um, it was a sweet little girl who came to see us at just the very end of the expo, and she had a great question. She was like, "What do you think it is that helps you become more of an adult or become more um, sure of yourself as mm. you grow?" And my answer to it was experiences. Mm. You've got to experience things to then learn and grow from them. Mm. You've got to make mistakes. You've got to be able to yeah, repair those mistakes and learn. Go experience different things to know whether you like them or don't like them. Mm. And that's this, it, it all comes down to this. That anything we mm. ever do does come back to that is that the experience. Have you experienced it? Uh, there's guys that you have, I have friends that go, I'm like, you ever been to France? Then you have something to do with French people and they'll go, oh, I don't like the French. I'm like, really? Why? Where did you go? Oh, I've not been. Mm. Then how can you know you don't mm. like the French? You've never been to yeah. France, man. You make, you, you, you're just killing a whole entire section of your experience of life mm. because of a theory that you have that has no basis. Or because somebody else said it. Yeah. And the same like girls who don't lift weights because they think they're going to get big. Yep. If they just did a tiny bit of research, they'd realize that's impo- like, not possible. Or if they set foot in the gym and tried it. Then yeah, same, same things, thing. little things. All I really back. want to say one more thing about go, you that. Go, topic, you go, you go. Um, you can finish with what straight. I said about I'd rather know how to feel for it than like hoard all this knowledge and know this is what I mean when I said that so like sometimes I know there's like four things in science that contribute to like muscle building or like bodybuilding since there's like four pillars you gotta hit like you gotta have some blunt force trauma and that comes from like heavy weight you gotta have like your what your hypertrophy however you say that word yeah, you right. know and there's two other ones there's two other pillars that you gotta like so that, metabolic damage that like contribute yeah, to yeah, it yeah. so let's say the blunt force trauma one with the heavy weights like somebody could tell you that shit but when i go on that motherfucker and i hit heavy weight i see the feeling that is contributed to that like i see the mm. feeling that is attached to that okay that's what they're talking about that's that feeling right there uh-huh. you know what i'm saying i don't need to know any more knowledge about it. i've already identified that's that feeling for blunt force trauma right there okay so all i gotta do is chase that if i want to target that goal of that yeah okay now i want the hypertrophy of that pump okay Oh, the, you know, they're going to talk about pumping blood and glycogen into your muscles. What does pumping blood and glycogen into your muscles really feel like? Like, what is that? Yeah, what, what is that, that pump feel? Yeah, what is yeah, that? That, that pain. I don't need that, to know yeah. any of that knowledge. I don't, you didn't have to tell me I was pumping blood and glycogen. I'm like, nah, mm. this shit just feels good. I didn't even yeah. know what the fuck it was. I didn't even know the science behind that. I'm like, this shit feels well, it's good. Just applying, that's the that's feel practical, of it. like, application of the science to it. Yeah. So you're hitting, you're putting it in practice. That's why you have to train. Yeah. But do you get what I'm saying? I don't even need to know that knowledge, though. Well, otherwise, to know yeah, that you it's do, a though. Good feeling. No, 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 but you do, because otherwise, what would make you think 
hey, I'm going to do a drop sit and force as much blood in the, in the muscle as possible. Which brings us back to the experience. So bro, he bro. goes in, he doesn't know what that feeling is. No, 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 I'm, then I'm literally an example He experiences it. it, then goes and researches it, then no, 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 no. If he researches or it. Or you do the research and then go feel it. I don't have to, Either way, you would need to come to the same conclusion at the end of the day. You need both. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, you, you definitely both. need to come uh, to get the best out of it. I mean, it's sure. definitely, yeah. you, you're going to want to know both. You're naturally going to be you, interested and you're going to want to know. You know, your these. knowledge is in depth, dude. Like, you can't just say that you don't know yeah. these things. You know, you've, you, uh, you, uh, you're, you, you, yourself. It all came from like, no, 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 but it's literally all came from me feeling and then I'm like, okay, science supports it too. Like, you know, it's me like, it's but me like what I felt that. and so then you, I'm like, oh, this is what science yeah. is talking about. So that's what I meant though. It was literally the opposite. Okay, I'm feeling this and then I go and read, oh, that's what science is talking about. That's that feeling science is talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather just know the feeling because you're practicing the feeling. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then it's, no, it's I don't even care it about the, It doesn't matter whether you knew it or yeah. not, bro. It mm. really doesn't matter. Like, and that's, you don't that, need to know why point. water and fucking that, helps so, you. It's just like, no, when you drink that water, you're gonna yeah. be healthy. You're gonna feel good. You Your don't need to know shit about the facts. You true. just know that shit's healthy. Mm. You know, and you know it's good for you. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna feel wow. I feel fucking hydrated. What's it feel like to be hydrated? No, I feel a little. My skin feels, but I yeah. feel more clear minded. Like you said on the keto. You feel these things mm. and you get an internal feel for them. Yeah. I don't even need to know the science. I don't even know why I feel better. I know I feel better yeah. when mm. I do this. But you still went and found out though. But you do, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good to know because but you're I'm smart, saying, uh, because you're clever, because you have a desire bro. to know more. And then there's sometimes you you'll you'll read about something else and you want to go figure out what does that knowledge mean and how, let me go feel for what that knowledge yeah, yeah. means. Absolutely, you're gonna know more, but. I'm See, just saying, and that, that's your process. It's always going to be an experimental. But you were smart enough to inevitably go and do the research that backed up the feelings you were having. I'm, I and encourage you to do the research. So yeah, and then you'll go the, go look for the what the research means. Like go feel for it, what that research means. You, you experienced means. it. You enjoyed it. You researched it. You got more involved, and that's yeah. that's the whole thing. So no matter what path 100%. brings you to that end involvement. It doesn't matter yeah. whether it's the research yeah. first, then the application, or the application, then the research. Like I listen I'm to like I, you, dude. I'm throwing, do it, and learn out what I did wrong afterwards. Mm. Because if I love it, I want to get better at it. Yeah, so what yeah, was yeah. I doing wrong? Let's find out and let's get better. How about this? Like, let's say you do a set of 10, bro, and three reps feel really fucking good. This, the next seven reps feel terrible. Yeah. How do you go online? How do you go online and figure out what made those three reps feel good? You can't. You literally have to analyze yourself like, what the fuck well, did I do that made those reps feel good? You mm. literally have to have that experimental knowledge. Like, Wait a minute, I made it. I got a more full range of motion. Brings us to overall I got a better stretch. Mm. But that's so what I'm saying. Positive self criticism. But that isn't that experimental, like, knowledge ah, in a sense. I think that's you know a desire saying? just to be better. But you have to experiment in the, you have to be in the field. Of course, to, you have to, to go and retry. That's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, you, couldn't, you couldn't research that. Because some people might hate that last seven reps and then hate that exercise and not do it again. Absolutely. Those are the people that won't yeah. progress. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not going to look at weight. But you get what I mean, yeah. though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. can't, you couldn't research how no. to make those three reps better. You could hear some tips, but like, you, can, you would never yeah. be able to like make that shift your ch like, unless you physically were like I can, I can in your read, mind doing it. I can read how to enough about that topic to I'm done cut that. into you and repair a tendon. I can read about how mm. to do that in every way, shape, or form. Doesn't mean I can cut into you and repair a tendon. I trust you. I'll Bro, stitch you back. <laughs> I'm like stretching. I'm making. You know my own I have to learn to also do the physicality of becoming a doctor, a surgeon, whatever yeah. to be able to, loot, to put the both together to create yeah. the result. And that's exactly what you're talking about. And you know, that's what you do successfully. You do both. You put them together, create a further result for the result. And I'll tell you something too. Stretching, bro. I'm stretching, right? I haven't done any research on stretch. I don't know anything about stretching. But when I get into a stretch and I'm like, and I, I like, I know that shit's working. I know I'm doing the best thing I could possibly do based on the feel. Yeah. Like, I know what I'm, like, when I'm, I'm reach up, for example, like, if I'm trying to get my shoulder mobile or whatever, I'm trying to stretch my body out. I'm like reaching right now and it's coming to like a brick wall where I can't reach anymore. But I still just keep pushing. And I don't know if science says that this is good, but I'm like, nah, I know. It feels like I'm creating space. It, creates, it, it feels like I'm creating like a canal for blood to come through yeah, see, I don't, and I don't allow. Like huh? I, I, I can't deal with that. Because for me, I'd be like, am I doing something that's, is this a good feeling? Mm. I'm like, or is this a, is this a good stretch? Or is this something that's. So you need see, the research first to push go, you in the right yeah, area. I'd rather go, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. rather go. Yeah. At least, so I have an idea that what I'm doing is on the right track, not just I feel aimlessly. Shit. Like, because <laughs> yeah. I'm not probably as connected. But this so is where I'm your like, genetic skill set comes in. I'm that intuitive. <laughs> yeah. I'll admit, I'm that intuitive. clearly yeah. has a genetic gift to yeah. be able no, to feel his body. No, but can't say it was a stretch. No, 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 no. It's literally Dude, not that. You bro. underestimate your own potential. Maybe I which do. Which is a scary but fucking we'll thing if it looks like this. I'm just talking about when I do this in my head. This is what I say. I get a mental image of what it's doing. It's literally an intuitive mental image that's telling me what I'm doing is right. I this world in a way cooler way than we do. But when I'm pushing up, to me, it's like I'm creating space for more blood to come through. When blood comes through, I feel like you have control. Like that's what's like you're getting motor function when the blood comes through. Okay, so I'm creading space and like. I don't know. What I was gonna say if you're gonna, it's hard because if you're gonna tell somebody, somebody wants advice and they say I want to know how to stretch my shoulders, yeah. and you go okay, 
stretch your shoulder in a way that intuitively you'd feel your shoulders stretch. In. Yeah, I can't explain that shit. That's what, but no, but yeah. they then they'd be like, "What? Well, shit." Yeah, and they'd be like, is this good? And they're like yeah, snapping this, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'd I'd rather uh, go in a safe way. Search you know. rotator cuffs. Stretch there's there's or certain something. pillars. That's you gotta, what I mean. There's You're, certain things you have. There's certain <laughs> yeah. things. Hey, it can't hurt. You need to like, know. Like how about this? Like when I say go till failure on a muscle thing, like bro, you, but don't feel the pain in your joints. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got it. There's yeah. certain things that are going to hold to be true. Like, do this, but if you ever feel this, stop. That's yeah, not okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's going to be certain things that you got to, that all have to click. Okay, this is happening, this is happening, and, and you know, those things aren't happening. So, so you've, got, cool. you've got, like, mental parameters inbuilt of, like, what, what the, yeah, like, what yeah, I know what, what good pain is and what bad pain yeah, is. So, so, we're basically, like, so what we're taking in here is oh, that, but Zoma, yeah. you, have, you have a base knowledge of the physique, how it moves. You've got a base knowledge of the foundational movements from training and mm. sports and wrestling. You've had mm-hmm. a background in that. True. The average person doesn't have those backgrounds. We would advise you do the research and do and, and, and anything. If you don't have a background in something, then you have to it. increase no knowledge. Lo- no but then don't be afraid to also then go well. and trial and Trust everything. your intuition. It's very true. Trust intuition. Trust <laughs> yeah, that's what feelings. I say. All yeah. that shit. If it feels yeah. good, give it a try. And just be want to be better. Go learn yeah. and progress. Ask questions. We encourage you to ask questions. Yes. Just don't ask open-ended, huge questions. Mm. Narrow them down. Get to the basis. Hey, and if you want to learn from us, don't send us DMs that say, hey, bro, can I ask you a question? Just ask me the fucking question out <laughs> of the bat because I will answer straight away because I'm reading that. What I'm yeah. not going to do is reply and go, sure, what's your question? Then miss it. And then not. And then you reply and then I miss your reply yeah yeah yeah. so on that That's one true. send Good it point. through if you've got questions send it through but we're gonna have to call this to an end guys and we will pull these two back together yeah, thanks, Lex, absolute the pleasure yeah, Zoma, thank you this very much time time on Zach, this is dope, it's a dope experience i hope you sure. enjoyed yeah. it on youtube guys all their youtube links will be in the description below Please same if you're it. listening on um the audios from itunes and soundcloud all our links and everything for everyone's instagram socials will all be in the description so make sure to show some love and check them out so until next time it's been ozoma this has been zach it's been lex this is the crew cast thank you all for joining in we'll catch you next Monday. much love we are out guys <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was dope dude